All right, guys, got to do a little new, new format here because we video has shut me down. So I'm trying to make this work for today. Um, sorry for the inconvenience. Uh, you will need one of these things at your convenience. Uh, and put a little title on your page. We're going to talk about graphs of radical functions. It's going to be great. It's going to be radical. Feel free to pause this if you need to. So read through this first problem. This is about uh, it's about driving. You know, sometimes you drive down a road and you actually see a speed limit like this, and you pay attention to it. Some people don't. So there is a way to check in the event of a fender bender of an accident, two cars crashing each other. They can take a look at the length of the skid marks on the road, um, and they can determine how fast you were going. And of course, it depends on the road conditions and whether it was raining out. But they can look at the skid marks. You know, on a, on a dry conditions or whatever, they can look at the length of those skid marks and the speed you are going. Use the length of the skid marks to determine the speed you are going, as it says in this question. So, you're on the scene, and you measure the two skid marks. One skid mark is 46 feet long, the other one's 62 feet long. Use your calculator and figure out if they were speeding or not. Pause the video and uh, see what you think. All right, so you probably figured out that one of these people, if you take the square root of 11, 1,104, they would be going approximately 33 miles per hour. It's not an exact decimal. Um, that's why we use the calculator to determine it. So that person's good. They weren't speeding. Good job. Thumbs up. Mr. Barch is so proud of you. The other person, however, about a 62-foot-long um, skid mark, Take the square root of 1,488, and you'll find that they were going 39 miles per hour. They would be liable in this accident. Moral of the story, follow the speed limit. Now, I tacked on another question over here about domain and range. Um, remember back to your Math 1 experience what domain is. Domain is any possible x value. We did a little bit of this with parabolas, but not much. Any possible x value you can input into an equation. Now, in this case, there's no x. The input would be L, as you see up here. So, what are the possible L's you could input into the equation? So, you take out your tape measure, and you go out there and you measure these, and you measure the length of the skid marks on there. What's the possible lengths you could measure? Well, you can't measure a negative distance, that's one thing. You could probably argue you couldn't measure zero because then there wouldn't be a skid mark. Um, so you might say the domain, I'm using x again because domain is x values, has to be positive values. You don't need this equal sign if you say that you know you can't measure zero skid mark. Um, it would make sense. If there was zero skid mark, the speed would be zero. There wouldn't be any skidding going on. Now the range, of course, over here, the range is the y values that are applicable. So in this case, the y is actually s, the speed you're going. What are the possible speeds you could be going? Now you could argue there's a practical limit to the speed. You know, the car might only go 100 miles an hour, 120 miles an hour. But in terms of this equation, the, the s values, the y values, could be anything as long as it doesn't end up being a negative. You can't take the square root of something and end up with a negative. Hopefully that makes sense. And physically, you know, the skid mark has to be, can't be a negative skid mark, it's not going to skid backwards on there. Hopefully that there's a practical side to both of these answers, and then there's a function side of these, the, the numerical algebraic answer to that. And we'll focus on that algebraic answer on the next one. So, you got three questions right here that go with this equation that we're going to graph. And everything in this next unit is all about this little basic family of functions here. y equals square root of x, or f of x equals square root of x. And we're going to figure out whether it's linear or not after we have the graph. And then think about whether inputs, you know, x values you can input in there are valid or not. You probably already know that already. What numbers could you not input into that equation? And, of course, you know, you can't input an, a negative x value because you can't take the square root of a negative. That's impossible. You would have, not have a real answer on there. So we're going to start with just to make a table. Knowing you can't input negatives, I'm going to start at 0, 1, and 2. Just like we do with parabolas, start with the easiest possible inputs pop you could. 
So, here's my trusty pencil here. You put in zero right there. What's the square root of zero? And of course, you know that's zero. Input one. What's the square root of one? The square root of one is just one. Input two. What's the square root of two? And you could take out your calculator because there's not a nice clean square root. And you could say the square root of 2, and I think it's like 1.4. Double check me on that. Um, but we don't really want to, we're going to graph this in a minute. We don't really want to graph decimal values. So that's like, that's not convenient. I'm not going to want to skip that one. Um, input 3. And the same thing happens. You get a decimal value. Input 4. Ooh, the square root of 4 works. Gives you an integer whole number. Square root of 4, of course, is 2. So I'm going to skip 3. I'm even going to skip 2. Square root of 4 is 2. Um, 5 wouldn't work very nicely. 6 wouldn't work very nicely. 7, no bueno. 8, not that good. 9 would work. What's the square root of 9? 3. So I've got, a, you know, I've got, a, I've got 1, 2, 3, I've got 4 different values I can fit onto this graph. I'm going to go ahead and graph this thing. So 0, 0 is the origin. Um, you know, I could go, I could keep going. 16 would be the next convenient one. The square root of 16 is 4, but of course that's off my graph. So I'm going to put my 0, 0 point on here. Write 1 up 1. Write 1 up 1. And now I start to get a little further out of here. Write 4 up 2. I'm almost ready to answer this linear question. Write 9 up 3. Now, if you were to play connect the dots here and draw this line, you'd realize it's not a line. It's curved. Lines are straight. Is it linear? Heck no, it's not straight. And think about this. Think slope. Think in terms of slope. Is the slope constant? No, certainly not. Is the slope getting bigger or smaller? Up one over one. Up one over three. Up one over one, two, three, four, five. So it's up one over one. That's one. One third. One fifth. The next one would be one seventh. One ninth. One eleventh. One. Keep on going. That slope is getting smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller. And smaller. Definitely not linear. It's not a constant slope. It's decreasing at a decreasing rate. Um, and it's never going back down, but it's just going up by less and less and less and less. We already answered this question. Are there any inputs that are invalid? Well, you, you, these numbers are all great. You can't input negatives. Simple as that. Why not? Can't take the square root of a negative. Um, so that would mean you can never get over here. For this graph, you can never get into quadrants two and three because you can never input a negative into that function, which helps us answer domain, which you may have seen come up here in a second ago. The domain of this is positives. You can only plug in positives. And you can probably see the range you never get below here because when you take a square root, you're not going to get a negative answer. So the range is all positive values as well. Hopefully that makes sense. And there's my reasoning for why you can't have a negative x value. You can't end up with a negative y value because you, if you take the square root, you're going to get a positive principal square root is what we call it. So this basic function is really important. We're going to take that function in the next couple of examples. We're going to mess with it. Um, so try to do this one on your own. Start with the table. You know, there's my table. Start with that table and go from there. Get a few points on here for this one, and then see if you can answer these questions there um, in a moment. I'll be back in a few.